Rewind the clock to January 2021. You're a member of the new incoming Biden administration. You're so excited to reclaim America from that orange Cheeto Donald Trump. You're so thrilled they're going to send you to China to be a part of the new diplomatic entourage to reset global conversations. When you get to China, something interesting happens. They say, we've got a COVID test for you. It's a little bit different. Instead of the one going in your nose, something's going in the derriere. It's going to look kind of like this, and it's not going to be comfortable at all. That's exactly what happened. The Chinese said that the Biden administration would have to comply with anal swabs for COVID testing. And as the State Department and the new incoming Biden officials started to learn about this thing, they were not happy. We can see some emails and break down how this all unfolded in real time. We'll notice that there was an email that took place on January 22nd, 2021, just a short two days after Joe Biden was inaugurated. 3.13 p.m., uh, who it's coming from, we can't see. Of course, it's all redacted because of the redaction rules. And it's going to somebody, and it's CC'd to somebody, and the subject says, new testing method, question mark. Somebody saying, what? New testing method? Doesn't sound good. Here's what the body of the email says. It says, uh, so a colleague from uh, so-and-so is telling our group blank that he was given an anal COVID swab at his apartment. Just a heads up, as I'm sure this is going to blow up soon, if you aren't already dealing with it. Employee's name is blank. Just getting ahead of this before the word of mouth starts spreading. Who is this coming from? General Services Officer, U.S. Consulate, General Sheng Yang. Now, we don't see the sender, we don't see the recipient, but these are all conversations from the State Department, all emails that come out from the State Department having problems with all of this, right? Unclassified documents, and so we're seeing this come out <clears throat> from early on in Biden's administration. And so what are they talking about? You may have seen some of these. This is a, an actual medical document, okay? It's medical literature from the Chinese. You can see here, Mandarin up here. And this is the test that they were giving back during the COVID pandemic. And you can see, you just insert one of those little Q-tip deals. Uh, this is a Q-tip. I don't know what, you know, they must have extra longer Q-tips or whatever there. But you just kind of go right in the rear end, swap it around there for it looks like five to 10 seconds, pull that puppy out, and then you just give that to the Chinese government. They're just going to take it from there. They know what to do with that. And, uh, you know, it's not, it's, it's for science. This isn't, you know, to embarrass you or humiliate you. It's just because they want science from you. And so they want the American diplomats to participate in their protocol. And you can see at 317, basically immediately right after that, we saw this one was at 313, fast forward 317 PM. Somebody responds, reply says, in what city did this occur? And what number test? And did he say if they gave any notice beforehand that the test would be conducted in this manner? And was he presented with options? Okay, somebody is not happy about this, whoever got that email. And they're saying, wait a minute, we just got elected and the Chinese are already shoving stuff up our rear ends? Not good. And so the email responds back, says, well, got some answers for those questions. Uh, city, Beijing. Where did it happen? He's in his apartment as part of the plus seven, from my understanding. Uh, and that's the group he's part of. Any notice? Nope, no notice, no options, as far as I can tell. And what were the tests that he had to do? Both a nose and an anal swab. So he had to take it up the rear too, didn't even tell him. A couple days right after Biden takes office, Chinese show up at this dude's apartment and just say, hey, this is going up in there. Go in there and give it to me. No options, no notice, right in his apartment right in Beijing, a U.S. diplomat who's over there, part of the plus seven group. And so he responds and the person says, thanks, we're going to pass this up immediately. And they did. That was about at 727, 47 minutes. So that goes out. Comes back now, subject, says uh, FAO, which is going to be the foreign affairs officer, is telling the embassy that it was a mistake to ask for the swabs and that it didn't apply to diplomats to be determined how blank will play it. But for now, we'll have to tell people they don't have to do it. Also, reportedly, you do it yourself in private, so not as bad as I envisioned. Who is this? Oh, this is the management officer. 
of the U.S. consulate in General Shenyang. So here, now you can see that uh, they're going to be telling people that they don't have to do it. Whether that's true or not, we'll see because we get further conversations about this. And again, this is on January 22nd, 5.38 p.m., all on the same day. Friday continues. Response from the person who got this email says, was not expecting this email on a Friday evening. Subject, no anal swabs for diplomats. Uh, tell them that they don't have to get it if they're a diplomat. Okay, we've got some immunity on this. Diplomatic anal swab immunity. Here, though, we see another email. This is from January 26. So this is six days after Biden is inaugurated. Subject is about a test. 10.34 p.m. at night. Says uh, uh, somebody... Please call me at your convenient time. Here's my number. Below text came from so and so. This is not good. Signed, somebody's name. What does the text say? Well, the text is down here. We can't see what it says, but probably says something like, I've got to get a swab in my butt. I'm not happy about it. And so they say, this is not good. What does the text say? We don't know, but they're unhappy about it. And so this is a few days after the first protocol said, uh, tell them they don't have to get it. Oh, a couple days later, somebody looks like they've got to get it. Response in a forward of this test says, I hope the GSO and the VIP Beijing visits can do something about this. Okay, the Chinese are standing strong. They're saying, we're putting them up there whether you like it or not. And the State Department's trying to figure out how to stop this because the diplomats don't want it in the bum. Here we see another email a day later on January 27th. COVID test, 21st day. Subject redacted. At this point, if they will insist on the anal test, comma, don't know what to say. Don't know what that means. Redacted, redacted, redacted. If they will insist on it, doesn't mean we're going to comply. Are we going to leave? Are we going to threaten something? Don't know what it means. Can't see it. We get another email on that same day. Team, FYI, on January 27th, they're still asking for the butt swabs. B6 is being asked for the anal swab and the environmental test. Now, seven days after Biden's in office. Can housing contact so-and-so? I'll have the VIP contact the foreign affairs officer ASAP or the foreign area officer or whatever that is called. So they are still getting the swabs. And I think at this point, it, it's just Xi Jinping just laughing his A off because he's just literally having his party shove pe stuff up America's diplomats' butts. And this just continues on. We see another email then on 12, 13 p.m., January 27th. I have asked so-and-so to contact so-and-so immediately regarding the anal swab and the environmental testing. He's calling them now. We're going to get to the bottom of this. Thank you from John. Somebody responds, says, yeah, thanks. Okay, unhappy as can be. And they're responding immediately, 1213, email response 1219. He's you know, waiting in his computer. Am I going to have to put that up there? So we see another round of emails. Uh, this one is uh, the same, same email sequence, January 21st says, okay, somebody, please contact the blank. So-and-so turned off the anal swab and indicated that, quote, we are fine with the oral or the nasal. He also turned off the inside apartment testing as I protested both of those items as well. Thank you. Signed off on by this person. Then we get a very interesting email. We fast forward a couple of months. That was right in January. We're talking about VIPs and diplomats and foreign area officers, and a lot of people are traveling over there. Biden's in office. It's now May 2021. Somebody emails Beijing VIP visits at state.gov. You can see this is a government email, government website. Subject, Beijing PCS arrival and quarantine questions. Copied over to this person from somebody, don't know who it is. Hi, so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. This is what I'm doing. This is why I need your help. I'm planning to arrive in the country early August. What do we need to know? Are we able to fly into Beijing directly? Someone said that we have to fly into another city. We currently have reservations for Beijing. Just wanted to check. 
Okay, we're VIPs from the U.S. government, and we need to go over there. Now, they say, we've been hearing a lot of horror stories about quarantine in China. It's now 2021. Trump's out of office. Biden's in charge. It says, unfortunately, the monthly newcomers call blank, and the calls aren't recorded, so we can't even hear the answers to the other questions via recording of the calls. So I hope you don't mind us asking our questions to you directly because we can't get answers anywhere else. We've had some conversations with the CLO and their office referred us to you for the details. We have been talking with a number of blank in China and those that recently left. We've heard a lot of horror stories about the quarantine upon arrival. Other American diplomats, people exiting out of the country who've already been there for a couple months are be hearing horror stories. We've been heard about we've heard about older children being separated from families during quarantine. We've heard about anal swab testing and real violations of diplomatic norms. Others have reported they were crammed into rooms with inadequate bedding, two twin beds for a family of four in subpar conditions bordering on detention center level living. Seems like the diplomats and their families not being treated according to acceptable norms. The escalation of the PRC's violation of diplomatic protections seems concerning. Can you help us with this? says, although, listen, we understand these stories can be exaggerated and taken out of context, but I need to ask you, what is the reality of the conditions in the quarantine hotels? Will blank have to contact with the embassy during our quarantine? Will blank be met with embassy personnel at the airport? Will blank, talking about this VIP, whoever this is, will have an embassy representative at the quarantine hotel to make sure we get settled in properly? I've got a whole paragraph of specific needs that I have, but it's all redacted. Any insights you can give us would be appreciated. If we missed anything, please let us know. Thanks. Signed off on by. Goes over to the U.S. side, the diplomats, and here's what they tell us. Uh, Good morning. Uh, Thanks for reaching out. I and the team here certainly understand your concerns. Going to try to address them to the best of our ability. Please note that Chinese travel, COVID testing, and quarantine, and other regulations are tightly controlled by the People's Republic of China Party, there is little flexibility in the process. U.S. Embassy Beijing and China in Washington have continually been engaged. VIP and travel teams here at the embassy continually monitor the regulations and provide the best guidance to our travelers. I've attached our travel handbook for your reference. Here, I'm going to try to address your questions. We've successfully brought back 140 diplomatic staff. Over 1,200 people returned. I can't directly respond to your, quote, horror stories, but I would encourage you to take social media posts with a grain of salt. We've had many families successfully navigate safe travels to Beijing. If you want to preview the hotel room in Shanghai, I've attached a Word document about that hotel. No direct international flights to Beijing. Those flights were shuttered at the pandemic. We're in talks, but not going to happen. Go to Shanghai first. To quarantine hotel policies in China, they are strict and not flexible. Under the current regulations, unfortunately, children ages 14 and up will need to quarantine in separate hotel room for the initial 14 days in Shanghai. Separate you from your kids. Upon arrival to Beijing, the goal is for the family due to third week in the diplomatic residence. On the third week, if you have medical concerns about this process, I encourage you to contact for guidance. Children under 14, each child can share a room with a parent in a double or queen bed. I'm unfamiliar with the bed concerns, twin bed concerns. We've not seen that in Beijing. Given blanks so-and-so, we can request certain quarantine room assignments be given according to our preference. No guarantees, but they try to accommodate. According to these regulations right now, so and so and so and so. As she says now, While in quarantine, most travelers don't need to contact the embassy directly or others other than to travel. But if there's a medical emergency, Shanghai is aware of this, and they can help you if a crisis arises. Also writes, there's no means for the U.S. government or any non-PRC, CDC, or customs personnel to have contact with you at the airport or the hotel. You're on your own. Until you've completed the testing and the quarantine regimen, regrettably, there are no means... For interpersonal interaction with USG representatives, U.S. government representatives, you're on your own, diplomats. Good luck. Both the airport and the hotel have successfully brought in thousands of expatriate personnel in the pandemic area. The processes are known by all parties and smooth. 
anal swabs and environmental testing inside U.S. government residences are not permitted for diplomatic staff. This acknowledgement of diplomatic rights has been confirmed repeatedly by the MFO and the FAO. If there is an attempt to conduct, conduct such a test, the traveler is fully within their rights to refuse the testing and contact the embassy. So they're still asking for it. And the question is, do those quarantine hotels count as USG residences? Or if they are not if the anal testing is allowed at the quarantine hotels, but not at the diplomatic residences after the quarantine is over. I understand some of these answers may not be what you're hoping for. I wanted to provide you direct, honest guidance based on the policies. If you've got concerns, talk to other people about it and get those butt cheeks puckered up because in China, it's going to happen. Please note that the PRC travel quarantine and testing can, they do change regularly. The guidance is designed to give you an idea of the current landscape. Please remain in contact with the Beijing VIP team. We look forward to welcoming you and your family to Beijing in the future with your swabs. General Services Officer from the U.S. Embassy in Beijing. And, of course, the person responds, says, thanks so much for the email. I can't say these are the answers we're hoping for, but we certainly appreciate the honest and direct response. I only wish we had received this information sooner. Then we would have not have accepted this assignment and we would have kept our dignity and our swab virginity that's what china did to the u.s diplomats seems like it happened right after joe biden took office wonder why that might have been wonder why uh, they didn't do that when donald trump was in charge wonder how his administration would have responded to this new development that took place starting right on january 22nd according to these emails leaked from the State Department. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. Are you uh, avoiding China for the foreseeable future? I think I am too. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. My goodness, I look forward to seeing you on the next one.